Microsoft just created a brand new tool that you'll want to know about, even for you Linux users, because it is cross-platform. The tool is simply called Edit, and it is a command line text editor tool, but wait, bear with me, it's a little bit more exciting than it sounds, and it's also not as complicated as it sounds if you're not used to using the command line, and if you're an advanced user, it's got some nice features that I think you'll still appreciate. Now, this tool was added by default into Windows in the latest 25H2 feature update, but even on older versions of Windows, you can just install it yourself, like through Winget, the command is just winget install microsoft.edit, and then it lets you just use the edit command from anywhere through the command prompt. Or you can just go on the GitHub page where Microsoft has this, it's also open source, and download the executable. It's just a standalone single exe. And you'll also see the Linux versions here as well. Right away you'll notice that even though it is command line based, it still has the familiar set of menus at the top, like file, edit, view. And actually these menus are even clickable with the mouse. It has full mouse support, you can select stuff too. And yes, this even supports the mouse if you're using the old conhost type window, not even the new terminal. And also interestingly, it lets you even open multiple files at once. I'm gonna go over that and more details about how it works in a minute. Now, as for why you would ever use this tool, it's probably mostly useful if you're in a situation where you have to remote into a server or just your computer, like you're using SSH where you don't have a GUI or something. So it's sort of like Nano and Vim, if you're familiar with that from Linux, except it does have full mouse support on by default. And also importantly, it has the standard key binds for like copy and paste, control C, control V, you know, the ones that everyone actually knows, not just weird random commands. Before I get to the interesting features of this tool, something you don't want everyone to know is all your personal info that's already out there online, which is where today's sponsor comes in, Delete Me, a data privacy service to which I myself have been a paying customer for over four years now from before they ever even sponsored. If you've ever Googled yourself, you definitely have seen the countless so-called data broker websites who not only collect and display all your personal information, like name, address, and phone number, but then also sell it to companies and other sketchy people to do whatever they want with it. This also makes it easier for malicious people to find and use your own personal information against you in phishing attacks, identity theft, harassment, and more. But that's where Delete Me comes in. They do all the work for you in submitting removal requests on your behalf. As new data brokers pop up, they're constantly adding new ones that they remove from. And when you sign up, you get a privacy report showing exactly which sites you were removed from after seven days and every three months after that. You can even submit custom requests to remove your data from hundreds of other sites, and an expert will handle it for you. This includes some surprising sites like berkeley.edu and certain government sites, so not just purely data brokers. Plus, they have other useful privacy tools like email masking and phone number masking for US users. So if you want to get your personal information removed from the web and search results, go to joindeleteme.com slash theojo or scan the QR code and use the promo code theojo for 20% off all consumer plans. And with all that being said, Let's continue. All right, so let's take a look at actually using this. You'll notice overall it's pretty simple, but it has a pretty good amount of features still. To open a file from the command line, you simply type in edit and then the file name. If the file exists, it'll open that one. Just be sure to not forget the file extension. And if that file name doesn't already exist, it'll create a file by that name when you go to save it. You can also just type edit and it will open up with a default file name, untitled1.txt. And when you go to save, in that case, it'll give you the opportunity to change the name and then hit enter to save. Like I mentioned, you can access all the top menus at the top by just clicking it or you can also use the alt keys with the first letter as usual. Taking a look at the edit menu, there's actually a pretty good amount of functionality in here, like find and replace. If we take a look at find, for example, all you have to do is start typing and it'll actually start highlighting the first result in real time. And then you can press enter or F3 to cycle through the matches. And you'll see there's also multiple options here for match case or match the whole word, and even to be able to use regex, which lets you do incredibly advanced searches if you're not familiar with that. There's also this close button to stop finding, and you can click all these with the mouse. You'll see that it toggles the checkbox, or you can also use tab to cycle through these and then toggle it with space or enter. With replace, it looks pretty similar. There's a before and after field. If you press enter while the cursor is in the find field, it will cycle through the results without replacing. And then if you're in the replace field, it will replace that current result. Here's a quick tip, this is not shown anywhere, but even if you're in the replace field active, if you press F3, it'll cycle through the results without replacing. So that's good to know. And you'll also see there's the options that you can click and even one to replace all. Back in the edit menu, you'll notice again, what's nice is it has the standard control C, control V and all that. Usually with most command line programs, control C closes that app. That's not the case here. It also even supports control Z and control Y for undo and redo. And a couple other things like select all. At the bottom, there's this status bar with some advanced stuff. 
So for example, by default, edit will convert any tabs to spaces and you can customize whether it does that or not by selecting tab. And then you can also choose the size of the tabs in number of spaces. One thing I noticed, if you set it to use true tabs instead of spaces, you can still change the tab width and it will actually update any existing tabs too. The tool does not seem to remember any settings that you change. Like if you set it to use tabs, it's not gonna remember that, but it will detect if there are existing tabs in the file when you open it. And if that's the case, it'll default to using regular tabs. Though it seems the tab width always resets to four. Also in the status bar, you can convert the line endings if you know what that is and need to do that. And you can also change the specific encoding method if necessary and convert between them. This thing on the status bar shows you the current position of the cursor. So that's line and column number. And also if you have any unsaved changes, it'll show a little asterisk here. Then at the bottom right, it'll show the name of the current file open or if it's not saved yet, what it will be called. Next, we can take a look at the view menu. This focus status bar basically just takes the cursor to that bottom bar we were looking at. Like if you're not using a mouse, that's how you would get to it. The go to line column option pretty much does what it says. It lets you just quickly go to a location. You can just put a line number without the column. So for example, if you just put 10, it'll take you to the beginning of line 10. And there's also a toggle for a word wrap. Next, go to file actually confused me at first until I realized that you can actually open multiple files simultaneously. So if you go to file, new file, for example, You'll notice at the bottom right, it says untitled1.txt plus one. And then if you click that, you'll see the same go to file menu and it has a list of all the open files and then lets you select which one you want to make active. So it basically works sort of like a GUI would with tabs like in Notepad where the currently active one, if you switch away from it, it's not gonna force you to save that file until you actually go back to it and choose to save it. Just be aware that because it's running in the terminal, if you close the terminal, it's gonna force close the process and it's not gonna be able to give you any warning about unsaved changes, so just remember that. Though in this go to file menu, it will actually show an asterisk next to any files that have unsaved changes, so you can know. There's also some more hidden features, like some command line arguments. If you type in dash dash help, it'll show them. Like if you want to open a file to a specific line and column number, you can do something like this, where this would open to the fifth line and the fifth column you put the colons between them. And like we saw before, you don't have to include a column. You can just put a line if you want, or none at all, it'll just open the file. Another interesting thing is you can actually pipe in the output of another command into edit as a new file. So for example, if I do the dir command on the current directory, then a vertical bar and edit, the vertical bar basically tells the command prompt to send whatever is the output of the thing on the left into the thing on the right. So if I do that, you can now see that it opens the edit tool with the output of the dir command, which you can then edit or save as a file if you want. Of course, there are ways to save an output directly to a file if you wanted, but still, it's good to know. Apparently, there was also a recent commit, though this is not in the actual release version yet, where it'll allow you to put in just a directory path as the argument, and it'll then open directly to the file picker with any files in that directory. That's not a thing yet, but it'll be soon. And I would be curious to know what you guys think about this. Also for you advanced users who SSH into stuff, maybe you'll start using this by default. Let's talk about all that down in the comments. Thanks again to Delete Me for sponsoring. And again, if you want to have your personal info removed from data brokers, go to joindeletemecom slash Theojo and use the promo code Theojo for a discount. If you wanna keep watching, next up, here's my video where I talked about all the new features in 25H2. There's actually quite a bit more than people are saying, so I'll put that link right there and click on. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, found it interesting, be sure to give it a big giant thumbs up, it helps out. And if you wanna subscribe, I try to make videos about twice a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.